In this video, we're going to learn how to create a lattice structure using mesh bodies and Fusion 360 forms. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video we're going to carry on with our Fusion Forms Masteries, but I want to begin talking about the application of some of these tools that we've looked at. So this particular case is going to be very similar to a Blender series I did quite a while ago where we were converting a Fusion body and we were trying to create this sort of lattice structure that went through the body, and we did this by breaking it up and we, we worked with the vertices that were inside of the mesh. So that's the general process that we're going to be doing, but we're going to do it in forms, and there are a couple steps that we need to follow to get this process right. The first thing that I want to do is I want to create a basic revolve. So we're going to start with a new document, and I'm just going to use a two-point rectangle starting at the origin, and I'm going to make this roughly 50 by 75. We're going to revolve this into a solid body about the vertical axis or the center line. And then we are going to go to our surfaces. We're going to create an offset of this outside face. We're going to make sure we turn off chain selection. Even though we don't have fillets on the end, we only want to grab this outside cylinder. And I'll explain what we're doing in just a second. So now we have our solid body and we have the outside skin of that. We've created a copy of the outside face. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to convert this to a mesh, then back to a B-Rep body, and then we're going to use that B-Rep body and all of its faceted edges to create a mesh using the Fusion Form pipe tool. So a couple things have to happen in order to make this work. We don't have to have a surface. We could use the solid body, but the mesh process is destructive. So I wanted to have this outside copy of the surface, and ultimately what I want is to create a lattice that goes around the outside, and then I can create a thin wall body to attach to it or just use the lattice on its own. So in order to make this work, we need to be mindful of the fact that when we're creating a form body, typically, we use this Create Form button, which turns us into a contextual environment. So we're still working in the design workspace, but our tools kind of change. And in order to get around this problem, we need to turn off Capture Design History. So we're going to right click at the top of Unsaved and we're going to turn off the history. Now you'll note that we still have our sketch and we still have a revolve here, but they don't really behave in the same way. If we were to modify this sketch and increase it, the revolve is not going to update. So while these are here, they're just sort of remnants of what we did inside of this now a direct modeling base feature. We can turn capture, the capture history back on at some point, but it's really not needed for this example. Okay, so now that we have this surface, let's go to mesh and let's tessellate it. So essentially what we're gonna take is a solid or a surface body and we're gonna turn it into a mesh body. We're gonna select it, we're gonna preview this. Uh, this part of the process actually doesn't really matter too much, but I am going to modify the refinement to low and we can modify things like the aspect ratio. And when we do that, you'll notice that it's going to increase or decrease the number of triangles. What I want to do is I want to get it to the point where I've got four of these rings or three of these rings going around, so four individual sections and these triangles between it. Again, this part of the process doesn't necessarily matter, but sometimes it can be important. So it's, un it's important that we at least understand what some of those options do. The magic in this step, uh, we could simply use this part of it, but the magic in this is using the remesh. Now I want to make sure I select the entire mesh body. So let's select mesh body, turn on preview, and then we can modify this. We can make it uniform, we can increase or decrease it. And I, for this example, it's a good idea for us to decrease it to the point where we don't have a large, uh, a, or a pretty large number of edges or triangles. So even though that this is turning into less of a cylinder, that's okay for this example. The more edges that we have, the more um, sort of polygons or triangles that we end up creating, the longer it's going to take to process and the, the higher chance of failure 
So we really want to focus on very simple shapes, at least for this example, and then you can play with this however you want. Okay, so <laughs> this is the next step in the process. We've created this mesh body, and well, we have to turn it back into a B rep. So we're going to go to Modify, and we're going to convert the mesh. Now, with Paramesh turned on, we generally have another option inside of Convert Mesh. But when we have it turned off, we're not capturing design history. We have the faceted and we have prismatic. We are going to go with the faceted method because we want to take all of these triangles and just simply turn them into a lot of triangular planar surfaces. So at this point, we now have all of these edges. And here is, again, the, the next part of this process is because we don't have capture history on, we can now just go directly into the form tools. They're going to behave slightly different um, because of the fact that we're not in a contextual environment, but we are going to select all of these edges and we're going to turn them into pipes. We're going to start by going into the pipe tool and note that this 20 millimeter diameter is way too big for what we need to do. So I'm going to decrease it to two, at least to start. Then I want to make sure under my selection priority that edge priority is selected. Now, it really shouldn't give us any other option, but we definitely want to make sure that we are selecting edges. By default, it's in box display. We're going to go to smooth display and just take a look at the results. So what we can see here is that we've created all of these pipes and they're sort of centered on the, um, the, the different edges that are created based on our mesh. If we hide that surface body, uh, you can see that we've just sort of got this cage that we're creating. We can go in and we can modify all sorts of different things. For example, the density, we can increase or decrease that. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna change the number of edges or divisions that we have along here. And where it really is going to be a drastic difference is in the intersections. Now, you will note that some of these intersections look better than others. You can see here where we've got six intersecting, that that looks quite a bit better than when we have five. And it's just a product of the way that the software calculates these. You can see in the bottom that in some instances where we have four, it looks better than when we have five come down here. So it can be a little bit tricky, but note that in the selection section that we can add or remove, um, we can add or remove these edges before we come in here. And we can also insert um, divisions or points and potentially make this a little bit better. With these loops, these segments, we actually have the available option to move them around and make some adjustments. We can increase and decrease them individually and play with that. Again, it's it's not really going to be part of what we're doing here, but it's important to understand that some of these issues are going to cause problems for us uh, simply for the fact that this is going to be self-intersecting. If we go into box display mode, a lot of times we can figure out some of these problems because what we end up having is we've got sort of these overlaps that happen in here. So one way that we can do, deal with this is, is by modifying these shapes and by moving them around. We do need to make sure that our selection priority and all of our selection filters are back on just in case we made any adjustments. And then we can work inside of here and we can modify these as needed. So I'm gonna double click that edge loop. I'm gonna to go to modify I'm going to use the uh, selection space so that way I keep it normal to its direction. I'm going to rotate this around and you can see that we really we just sort of have this bad intersection here. So one way that we can get around that is by deleting. We're going to select some faces and we're going to hit delete. You can see that now this leaves this open. We can come in and we can weld vertices. We can weld these two together and seal that back up. This leaves this pipe open, unfortunately, uh, so we will need to modify that. And, and there are some other issues that happen in here. The intent of this is really not to spend a bunch of time trying to fix these problems, but it, it's simply to highlight the fact that these problems exist. I'm gonna maintain a crease on the edge of that. And at least now that we have this cage, let's go ahead and try to convert it. So under modify, um, you'll notice that we have all this, the standard modification tools, but unlike before when we are in the contextual environment, we don't have the finished form body. So what we need to do is we actually need to convert this and we can convert it here or we can right click on it and we can convert it from here. 
uh, I, they're, they're going to be the same option, but we're turning a T-spline into a B-rep. Now, if this works, then we will have a solid body. And you can see here that we converted it to a solid body. So even though some of these uh, intersections are less than ideal, it might still work as a conversion. Now, let's bring back our original solid body. And you can see here that we've got sort of this mesh that overlaps it. What we can do is we can use some of our direct modeling tools. We can increase or decrease this. Uh, 45 looks okay. Obviously, if we had a higher mesh resolution, then it would be fine. Uh, but you can kind of see that we can play around with these and we can get to a situation where maybe these two overlap just slightly. And then we can use tools like Shell and we can um, we can get rid of the inside of that, and then we can combine them together. So we can join these two together, and we can make one solid body that has sort of this lattice or this mesh on the outside. Now keep in mind that we don't have our history turned on. So the only thing that we can do is like Control Z to undo any of those elements. But again, the main point of this was really to show the workflow or the process where we can take a very simple design, just a revolved cylinder. We created an offset copy of the outside surface, and then we converted that surface to a mesh. Now, it could have been done with the original cylinder. That would have been perfectly fine. But then we would have had mesh elements on the top and the bottom before we did the shell. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that inside. Uh, we can use those direct modeling tools. But we would have had mesh elements on the top and bottom, and we would have had to deselect those unless we wanted the mesh to go across the top. And during that remesh process, the number of triangles that we have is going to control the number of tessellations, and the number of tessellations is, is ultimately going to affect the resolution of that mesh. So if we convert the cylinder, and then we remesh that cylinder, we're going to remesh that entire body, we're going to preview it, and again, the number that we use here is just going to dictate that resolution. So the higher number, the higher the resolution. And then again, we need to convert that body back to a solid. So we're going to use the convert mesh and to turn it back into a faceted B-rep. And then we can go into our form tools and we can use create pipe and we can use all these as the basis. And again, the amount of time that this takes is going to be dependent upon um, just the number of triangles you have. We're going to make sure that we are using that edge selection priority. And again, we'll just sit here. We'll let it crank away. We'll see what we get as the result. That looks pretty good. I'll just say OK. And now you can see we've created that entire cage around that solid body. Remember that we do still need to convert it to a solid body. And that can be done with utilities and convert. Or you can right click on it. And uh, you can use convert in here. It's the same thing. I'm going to turn it into a B rep. And again, that'll, you know, we're looking at it in box display when we're converting it. Theoretically, it should automatically go back to smooth display. You'll see here that we've got some self intersections, some things that we would need to fix similar to before, just some little overlaps. But you can see that the, the resolution on this mesh is quite a bit higher. So uh, this is, it's a really cool process. It doesn't have a lot of practical applications. Um, there are some instances where this could make sense if you had a very thin surface and you wanted to create some piping on it, turning it into a mesh, tessellating it, getting those faceted surfaces, turning it back into a solid body and maybe combining it with something else. It can be, um, you know, it can be a pretty unique process to create some things like jewelry or some, some unique sort of um, lattice structure that you might want to 3D print or something just have to play around with it a little bit, play around with the different settings in the pipe tool and see if you can get that to work. There is another tool that we have in the solid tool set called pipe and it doesn't quite have the same effect. Uh, so for instance, we can make a new body. I'm going to turn this into a two millimeter, but with this tool, you can see here that we can make multiple selections, but once we start to overlap, um, like once we try to get this to go back on itself, that's where it starts to fail. So you can see that this works to create a solid body and we can use this tool in a similar fashion. You just have to do it manually in a bunch of times. If you just box select all these edges, it's not gonna work the same.
so hopefully that uh, you know that was pretty helpful. You were able to see maybe some some new and unique ways in which we can uh, use the form tools for something different to create these sort of lattices or mesh structures. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.